All right, everybody. Hey, this is 20 Minutes with Bridget, and the date is April 10th, 2020. And um, the um, topic is codependency. So we're going to talk about that for the next 20 minutes. And um, yeah, so also this video is going to go up on Patreon. Um, so um, that's where it's going to be. Um, if anybody gets a hold of the link, um, you can find all these 20 minutes with Bridget um, on there. Also, uh, the blog um, that I do, coe-llc.com, uh, there's going to be a blog with this, 20 minutes with Bridget, um, codependency as a topic, and I'll have all kinds of different links. So let's go ahead and start down the codependency road. All right, so um, yeah, let me get over here real quick. Codependency is a behavior condition and relationship where one person enables another person's addiction, poor mental health, immaturity, irresponsibility, or underachievement. Among the core characteristics of codependency is an excessive reliance on other people for approval and a sense of identity. So let's go ahead and roll down. So in the 80s, um, I spent a lot of time, you know, uh, in, in working on codependency, there was a whole bunch of books during that time frame. I'm 51 now, so like I'd say, um, you know, uh, in my, you know, late teens and uh, early 20s, um, I started doing, there was a lot of work coming out, the inner child stuff and also codependency. So I traveled down that road and it's interesting how codependency really never got, take, nobody ha really has taken a hold of it and really understand it. And so now we're in this major, major time period where everyone is like codependent, codependent to someone, something, um, you know, even an event like Burning Man. So there's like all this like codependency that's going on. This is like the prevailing issue with why people can't be truthful. They can't be honest. They can't um, think correctly. There is like no critical thinking. Um, I think I also put on this blog, um, books for Rudolf Steiner, The Karma of Untruthfulness, where he talks about like everything that's going on. We've created it because we're not telling the truth and nothing is telling the truth and there is no truth. And in order to, you know, figure out what the truth is, you have to get yourself off codependency. You have to stop the co codependency entirely so that you're driving your bus nothing else and nobody else is driving your bus for you while you just ride along. Okay, so symptoms of codependency, low self-esteem, people pleasing, poor boundaries, reactivity, uh, which we find a lot of people are super reactive these days, um, caretaking, um, being controlling, uh, dysfunctional communication, um, obsessions, dependency, denial, um, problems with intimacy and painful emotional stuff, you know, like people can't actually deal with and shut out. Anyway, I highly recommend, you know, the books of um, The Karma of Untruthfulness and there's eight volumes and um, there's just a lot of, you know, really good information and those links are again on my blog, 20 Minutes with Bridget, April 10th, 2020. Um, and it's codependency for the topic. So I wanted to talk a couple, about a couple other things. And so, you know, a big thing that people are into right now and that they like to use as a, a reference term is the cult of personality. Um, so, you know, the thing is, is like, there couldn't be a cult of personality on, on any level or shape or form if people weren't codependent. So I'm just going to read kind of a definition of cult of personality from Wikipedia. Um, it says the cult of personality or the cult of a leader arises when a country regime or more rarely an individual uses techniques of mass media propaganda and big lie, speculate, speculative, speculation, um, the arts, uh, patriotism, Hollywood and government organized demonstrations. We could also add false flag events in there um, and rallies to create, you know, idealistic, heroic, worshipful image of a leader 
often through unquestioning flatter or praise. The cult of personality is similar to apotheosis, um, except apothe apotheosis, <laughs> um, except that it established by modern social engineering techniques, usually the state or the party, one party states and dominant party states is often in total totalitarian and authoritarian um, countries. So bottom line is like, we're doing this. Um, we don't really need, you know, some leader or whatever. Um, there's all, all kinds of predictive programming and mind control um, and, you know, things to, hold on one second, let me get here. And things to actually, you know, connect you, feed you, and attach you to something that is going to create codependence in you, which is not going to develop a strong sense of self, a trust in yourself, or I don't, I don't really trust in others, but I trust in myself. Um, and being able to maybe even do the work that you came here to do and not follow along, you know, not follow along somebody else's information. And when we're codependent, we can't critically think because we're low self-esteem or reactive to other people, events, and whatever else. And that reactive part is really what blocks us from being able to figure out the truth, right? So when we're developed in America as codependent people, there are so many things. I mean, we have these so many of these statements, like, for example, um, be ladylike. It's a very codependent statement because, um, you know, what is that? I mean, nobody really ever tells you, you know, maybe you might learn that if you wear a skirt, you have to keep your legs together, right? Um, but if you wear pants, then, you know, they're still telling you to be ladylike, you know, um, not being able to be who you are and express the way that you want to express yourself. And then you become insecure about everything about you because you don't understand what's being said or projected uh, onto you. And so then you start to see everything that you do as bad. And so you're constantly looking at other people and things, you know, to figure out how you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to act. Right. Um, so there's, um, I was trying to figure out, I had a statement here too. Oh, this is my favorite codependent statement. Actually, I have two favorites. Who do you think you are? So every time that you get out of a box of somebody else's like thinking and control and they get reactive, one of the first things they're going to say to you is, who do you think you are? You know, that's a very codependent statement because it's trying to force you back under to, in, as an enabler of that person's reality, right? So they can use your, utilize your energy because you can't think or walk away or, decide, you know, what the truth is and, and how you want to live your life and who you, who you really are. The other one is if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. That's super codependent. And so whoever's training us, you know, in early development part of our years, um, whatever nice is or not nice is, is a project, uh, you know, is their mental projection. Uh, so these are like general terms that they use to keep you kind of in and under control um, and making you confused and nervous and insecure and feeling bad. And if I was to like pick, you know, what the original sin would be, like, you know, if I was going to tell people like what kind of a definition that I would use, the original sin is when you first learned that you were bad, but you weren't given the details of, of what that was. So you grow up with this overwhelming sense of bad um, because you were given no real definition of what bad was or what you were doing that was bad. And that's the original sin, you know, the moment that somebody projected onto you that you were bad, or that there was somehow something wrong with you. Um, and this is part of the codependency, right? The attachment. And so I put some things here like, um, you know, we're never allowed to confront, ask questions. People get really mad and reactive, right? Because you know, how dare you like stick your head out of your codependency? 
<laughs> stay stay in your box of codependency and don't ask that kind of information um, because it's none of your business kind of a thing. Um, we're not allowed to confront misinformation. We're not allowed to come up with our truth um, as we collect data. You know, we're not even allowed to, unless you go to school, you don't know how to research. You don't know how to collect data. You don't know how to accumulate a whole bunch of things to actually try to form your own opinion through critical thinking. Um, that's part of codependency doesn't really like that as well. So, you know, um, you can have codependency to clothing, act like a lady, wear a dress. Uh, you can have codependency. I saw a really crazy video today on um, Global Vision, who's from Russia, I just love him, um, who he was showing, I think it was called um, subliminal messaging um, and, you know, like global mind control. So YouTube channel, Global Vision, if you're watching this, you should go look at that. I might actually add it to the blog, but it like blew my mind um, on the conditioning and like, whoa, I mean, like we're talking like super theatrical that the system is doing these things they're calling transmissions and stuff like that worldwide. Total mind control. It kind of scared me. I got to the middle of the video and there was this like Lord of the Rings eye. You have to see it to believe it. And it's, the, there's a voice talking and there's like two, 200,000 people there. And the eye says, look at me, look at me in the eye. And that, that's when I like freaked out. I was like, yeah, I'm, that is just, um, just way off the charts, mind control. I mean, just, uh, yeah, something that people really, really need to like watch out for. Holy cow. Um, so we can be addicted to events, you know, TV, our phones, computers, um, what else? Dating, people, foods, objects, clothing, um, you know, all kinds of things. We have not just one codependent relationship with, but we have multiple in this day and age codependent relationships that are not healthy um, and that leave people feeling low self-esteem, insecure, reactive. You know, if you have any of those symptoms, you're pretty darn sure you have codependency. There's a really great book. It's called Codependency No More. I put the link on the blog. Um, and it was one of my favorite books that I read in the 80s about codependency. Um, and so, yeah, get yourself some codependency relief. Okay, we're moving into, um, I just want to morph out here. <laughs> so we're going to do the um, mudra for today. So hold on one second. I've got to scroll to go get it because I forgot to put that link up. Okay, so we're going to do um, a mudra and breathing. It's called uh, Kale Savara Mudra, and it's for mudra calms the mind, soothes the avalanche of thoughts or emotions altered. It is a powerful, and you can change your character traits, removes the addictive behaviors. Um, there's something else on here I really like that it said. Yeah, so you can kind of use it to help, you know, with your personal be behavior or modification um, to, you know, unattach yourself. So, oh, here it goes. Um, throughout our lives, we're going, we are going polishing our character traits in some way that the sculptor makes as a statue from a block of stone review. But this is no time should become a battle against yourself, but a loving and comprehensive guide to the right direction. Unpleasant and annoying as they may be, the negative traits of our characters or bad habits or addictions, once overcome, um, they can help us to actually move forward. And this is um, one of my favorites. And you see people doing, you know, so you see all these people always doing kind of this heart thing, right? And this is kind of like where it comes from. <laughs> but there's a, whole, there's a whole hand gesture that goes along with it. Um, so what we're gonna do is the middle fingers come together. These guys come in. These guys come into a heart. 
right? So that's kind of like what it looks like and what it looks like from behind. And I'm actually gonna take it down and I'm gonna put my wrist gently on my lap so that there's a place where all this can hold while I do this. And we're gonna do five, five breaths in our nose, 10 counts, pause, out our nose, 10 counts, pause, and then we're gonna do it four more times quietly to ourselves. So breathe in your nose, 10 counts. Pause, breathe out your nose, 10 counts. Hold. Okay, we're gonna do it quietly now. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. And um, yeah, uh, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Thanks so much and, um, and uh, blessings. <laughs>